Hello, it's been a while. Um, it is almost May. I think tomorrow is the first day of May. It's just been crazy around here. So my son turns three pretty soon and he actually started his first day of preschool um, at the end of last week. So I am trying to figure out um, what it's like running my business um, almost full time. So there's a lot of work to be done always, but just trying to figure out like what my schedule looks like now has been kind of fun and crazy. And in Trimmy fashion, I came up with an amazing Mother's Day collection idea, but a little too late. So come with me today as I work on that. And um, the Mother's Day ship deadline is going to be, I think, this Friday. So it'd be amazing if we can get it finished um, before Friday so people can order it for Mother's Day. But if not, we'll have it available in the store for Mother's Day. And um, I'm actually going to be doing metal clay, which I haven't done in a really long time. That was probably the first piece of, um, like, the first thing I used to make jewelry um, back in high school. And I haven't touched it since. So it's been quite a while. Um, so I'll show you the supplies that I ordered and um, what I plan on doing. And if you use metal clay, feel free to tell me what I'm doing wrong <laughs> in the comments. If you have any constructive feedback, feel free to let me know. But my idea is if this works well, then I'll make kind of the samples in metal clay and then we'll make a mold and um, cast all the future pieces. So I kind of ordered things from companies that focus on like regular clay jewelry. And um, this is actually gonna be for a different collection. But if it goes well, I'm going to do a little stamp charm with this little postage stamp um, clay cutter. And then this is going to be for the Mother's Day collection. So the charm will be this shape. And then I ordered these, the two millimeter and then one and a half millimeter. So these will be, um, I think they're called depth sticks or depth guides. So you basically, um, if you're new to this like me, I'm pretty sure what you do is put your clay down here and put a stick on either side and then roll it. And then the clay should be the depth of the sticks that you put it on. So this one I ordered um, two, thinking I would get two of them, but apparently it was two sets. So I got an extra one and a half, just in case. And then I ordered an acrylic roller and board. So it's just covered, so I'll unwrap that. Then I ordered sterling clay. And then I ordered this stamp mat. So my plan is to use my X tool and cut out my design on this stamp and then use the mat to stamp the silver clay and then cut it out with the shapes. So we'll see if my plan works. And for the collection, it's Mother's Day, but it's something that I'm gonna have year round if it works well. So these are, and it's gonna be a birth flower charm. So these are the different flowers for each month. If you're not familiar, each month has a couple of birth flowers associated with it, kind of like a birthstone. And I picked um, flowers that I thought would look the nicest um, or that I kind of had a connection to. So um, this is an order from January all the way to December. So each charm is gonna have one flower on it. And then, like I said, this will be the charm shape. And the flower, the flower will be inside of it. So I plan on stamping it so the flower should be raised. If I'm figuring that out right, if it doesn't work, what I'll do is um, make the charms and then engrave the actual charm with my X tool. So that's kind of plan B, but I really wanted it to be raised if possible to give it more of like a 3D effect. So anyway, these are all the flowers. I'm, I drew all of these and I'm really proud of how they turned out. 
So you've got carnation, violet, daffodils, uh, sweet pea, lily of the valley, rose, um, water lily, poppy, morning glory, marigold, peony, and holly. And the idea was, you know, you can use them like birth flowers. You can get a charm with um, a flower that represents somebody special to you. Or if you just have like a special connection to any of these flowers, I'd say go for it. So honestly, I love the poppy, but I have no really connection to August. <laughs> it's sentimental to me, but I think the poppy's pretty. So I might just keep one of those for myself if it turns out nice, just because I like it. Here's where we are right now. So I washed it off. It looks like the detail inside might be. Yeah, I don't think it just showed up quite like I wanted it to. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. It might be too small, but I've got my son's Play-Doh. Um, we're gonna push it and see how it looks. Oops. Let me try again. All right, so the outline's there, but the detail is not. So I might be asking for too much with this design though. Shoot. So I inverted it and I think it looks more like I was hoping. Maybe I do another pass and I get a little bit deeper. <laughs> it's hard to tell on this Play-Doh. Here's my little Play-Doh tester. Um, hopefully you can see more of the detail when I move into the metal clay. This is Holly, you can't really see the berries. So I feel like I don't have enough time for the trial and error I need to do. But here are the all the stamps that I made. And then I'll show working on um, the charms in a little bit. So I finished all of my stamps and we're gonna give stamping them into the metal clay a try. to take the paper off but I think I'm ready to go so like I've said before I have never done this before so kind of figuring it out based off of some helpful YouTube videos um, I've got the plate that I'm gonna put the metal clay on I've got my roller I've got my metal clay I've got the cutter for the outline of the charm I've got my um, sticks to measure the depth. I think they're called depth sticks. Um, two millimeter, two millimeter and one and a half millimeters. And then I've got all the different birth flower um, stamps that I made. So, oh, and I also have olive oil. That's something I read um, to use for the metal clay. So we'll see how it goes. Oh my goodness. Um, pretty sure this was $75. So look how tiny it is.
the dried charms the next day. So I'm happy with these, but in order to get all the detail, I had to like push it in um, instead of stamp it. So they're a little bit thicker or kind of wonky on the back. So I've got a different idea that I wanted to try today and see if it worked. So let's try it out. All right, I'm much happier with this new technique. So what I'm doing now is cutting the charm shape first, and I ended up liking the one and a half um, millimeter um, thickness, and then I inserted the clay into the stamp. So I saw a video of somebody else doing that with like some professional tools, so hopefully it'll work with my stamps. It worked pretty good with the marigold one that I just did um so I just I think I filmed it but inserted the clay wiped it and now I'm letting it dry a little bit so hopefully it'll be more stiff and then I'm going to insert it on top of the charm so here's the sweet pea finished it's a lot more detailed than the way I was doing it before so I think it looks good These are all the charms that I just fired with the torch. So I, um, let's see, where is it? I filed this one and it looks like silver. So I think I did it right. And then I sanded the back right here too. So I think I did it right. When I get home, I'm going to um, clean them with a brass brush to get the, the white residue off and then hopefully have some shinier pieces that look closer to a charm. Now that I sanded and filed the edges, I am going in and welding with my uh, welder the bail. So I really like my welder for kind of preparing for soldering. So if you don't have one of these, it's something that I thought maybe I could do instead of soldering, but it just isn't strong enough with silver. But it's really good at actually tacking pieces together to hold them for soldering so it's not 
like a cure-all for um, not soldering anymore, but it's actually been really handy. So I'm gonna go through, I did, um, let's see what I got to see. So I kinda filed a little indention right here where the bale will sit and then I weld it on and then I'll solder it from there. Here are all the charms and they've been liver of sulfur. I um, put patina on them. So now I'm going to remove uh, the patina from the high points. This is how I do most of my jewelry. I like to add the patina because I use so much detail. So the patina kind of helps the detail pop. So I'm gonna remove that and then I'll show you what it looks like after. All right, it is the next day. I tumbled and polished the charms. Oops, that's gross. <laughs> I'm trying to multitask and eat some breakfast while I work, which probably isn't the best idea. Who knows how much uh, metal I've ingested. I don't know if you can tell here. I was hoping to remove a little more patina than it did. So I don't think it looks bad, but there's just, it's kind of, like uneven so I'm gonna try to do another round of removing that and then polish it again and then I think they'll be ready so I kind of wish it was either like all over or not where it is right now so I'm gonna try to remove it a little bit more of course today is the day that we are going to launch them I usually don't work quite this tight but it's just been a couple, a uh, rough couple of weeks. Not rough, but like busy couple of weeks with my son going to preschool and um, just having a bunch of other stuff that I needed to do. But anyway, I think we'll have them done for today. batch of orders from our birth flower charm release today is monday um we released it on friday to our newsletter subscribers the vibs and we launched it in the store and then online to everybody else on saturday and yesterday was mother's day um ideally i would have released this in time to like ship and have it delivered for mother's day but it didn't happen so um anyway I've got um, some orders to ship out, and then we're gonna send out another email today to kind of follow up to the VIBs if anybody forgot to order or just didn't see the email that we sent last week. Hello, it has been quite the past couple of weeks. So today is currently Sunday. I am gonna work at the store today. I don't typically work on Sundays, but my son has been sick off and on this past week. So, um, oh no. So anyway, um, I wasn't able to work yesterday. My goodness. I wasn't able to work yesterday, but I wanted to go ahead and show you how we had the birth flowers displayed around the store. And um, I'll be updating it, but I'll kind of show you my vision and then what we're doing right now. So as far as our cases, we have the shelf with um, a chain and the charm. So just two of our birth flowers so people, when they come in, can see some of them on a necklace. And then over here right now is our build your own necklace station. I plan on kind of making this whole wall like a build your own necklace situation. I'm going to do a sign up there that says charm bar. And then instead of our prints and cards right here, we're either going to have the different charms um, and chains on display, or I think I'm going to do like big drawings so people can kind of see um, what the charms look like and then with the pricing next to that. So that's kind of what I have um, in mind right now. If you have any ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd love to know what kind of ideas you guys have. But for now, we have... Um, our chains right here 
We just have the same style chain. I think I'm gonna expand um, into different styles soon. But right now we just have um, the same style in a 16, 18, or 20 inch length. And then um, these are some of those heart charms that I engraved for us to keep in the store. I think that was probably my last video or two. And then here are all of the charms that we have right now for people to build their own necklaces. And this opens up. So here are our little pebble charms that I engrave initials on. We've got these with some gemstones. These that I engraved. And then these are the birth flowers. So we're missing um, September, I think is sold out. And then here's kind of what we have left of all the others. I um, I know like once we start to have more charm options, th this way of displaying isn't gonna work as well. So I'm gonna play around with some other ways to display so people can see more of the charms. I'm thinking one of those little um, like jewelry box type situations with the little squares and then each style will be in its own square and then we'll have like a little label on it with the price and then up there you can kind of see a better um, idea like almost like a menu <laughs> you know like at a fast food restaurant you have all the list of things and the prices so that's kind of what I'm thinking to make this like it's whole like a whole situation right here and then Iris today is wearing a little flower charm. I think she's got the marigold, which is October's birth, or birth flower. I was going to say birthstone. <laughs> I'm still getting used to calling them birth flowers. But anyway, I'm going to go work on some stuff over here, and that'll probably be in the next video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some good ideas. Um, this is, like I said, I think this is the first time I've done this technique with um, my jewelry so I think next time I might do a silicone instead of the stamp uh, material so if I do I'll share that and how it turned out and then um, I think overall it turned out really well I'm happy with the final result and I think I'm gonna make probably a couple of more charms of each flower design and then I'm gonna pull a favorite from those and then have those cast by my casting company they'll do a mold and then um, anytime I want one, I'll just reach out to them and ask them to cast some for me. So that way I don't have to make the charm every time. So anyway, that's kind of how I create things right now. I'll create um, the first one and then I'll send it off to a casting company to cast it for me or make a mold and then cast. And then um, I'll, like I just ordered a bunch of sunflowers for our rings and they're going to cast those, send them to me, and then I still have finishing to do. So I'll solder on the, um, the ring band, I'll form them, I'll solder it closed, and um, add the patina and polish it and sand it. Um, so right now, you know, I'm still putting a lot of work in, but at least having somebody else cast it for me saves a little bit of time. And I'm not making each piece from scratch every time. But anyway, thank you so much for following along. I... Hopefully, if my whole family can stay well, um, I'll be a little bit more consistent with the YouTube videos. Um, hopefully, I'll have some more time on my hands, but <laughs> not yet, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, thank you for following. Feel free to find us on Instagram at Paige Barbie Jewelry if you want to see more updates um, of the jewelry we have and any behind the scenes. And I'll link down below um, all of the products that I used from Amazon and um, Xtool and everything. So if you're interested in doing your own um, clay jewelry, like I said, I'm not a pro, so <laughs> this is just what I did. And if you are a pro, let me know if you have any tips on ways that I could have done this a little bit better. I do have um, one more charm idea using the precious metal clay again, so I'll take you behind the scenes with that as well. So if you give me any ideas on how to do it better, I will definitely implement those in the next video. Thanks again. Bye.